This is by CNRS on FIS.org. And a little bit about the Queen of Sheba. What was so special about her? Queen of Sheba, Arabic Bilkis, in the Ethiopian Makeda. She flourished 10,000 BC, according to Jewish and Islamic traditions. She was from uh, Ethiopia, the ruler of the kingdom of Sheba, or Sheba, or Saba, in southwestern Arabia. In the biblical account of the reign of King Solomon, she visited his court at the head of a camel caravan bearing gold, jewels, and spices. The story provides evidence for the existence of important commercial relations between ancient Israel and southern Arabia. And according to the Bible, the purpose of her visit was to test Solomon's wisdom by asking him to solve a number of riddles. The story of Bilkis, the Queen of Sheba, is known in Islamic tradition, appears in the Quran, though she is not mentioned by name, and her story has been embellished by Muslim commentators. The Arabs also give Bilkis, Bilkis a southern Arabian genealogy, and she is the subject of a widespread cycle of legends. According to one account, Solomon, having heard of from a hoopoe, hoopo, one of his birds, that Bilquis and her kingdom worshipped the sun, sent a letter asking her to worship God. She replied by sending gifts, but then when Solomon proved unreceptive to them, she came to his court herself. The king's jinn, meanwhile, feared that the king might be tempted into marrying Bilquis, whispered to him that she had hairy legs. <laughs> I'm going to start laughing again. <laughs> that she had hairy legs and the hooves of an ass. <sighs> oh my goodness. Okay, talk about, you know, rumors. Solomon being curious. <laughs> King Solomon being curious about such a peculiar phenomenon had a glass floor built before his throne. <laughs> I guess a mirror, so that Bill Quiz, tricked into thinking it was water, raised her skirts to cross it and reveal her legs. <laughs> they were truly hairy. Solomon then ordered the gin to create a de de depilatory for the queen, in other words, to, to remove the hair. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Solomon then ordered the gin to create a depilatory for the queen. <laughs> Did she <laughs> Did she use a frank for that? Oh my goodness. Tradition does not agree as to whether Solomon himself married Bill Quiz or gave her in marriage to a Hamdani tribesman. She did, however, become a believer. The Queen of Sheba <laughs> appears as a prominent figure in the Kerba Nagast, the glory of king, the Ethiopian national epic and foundation story. And according to this tradition, the Queen of Sheba, <laughs> I'm sorry, called Makad Makeda, visited Solomon's court after hearing about his wisdom. She stayed and learned from him for six months. And on the last night of her visit, he tricked her into his bed and she became pregnant. She returned to her kingdom where she bore Solomon a son, calling him Menelik. Menelik I was made king by his father, thus founding the royal Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia, which ruled until the deposition of Haile Selassie I in 1974. The story of the Queen of Sheba also appears among the Persians, probably derived from the Jewish tradition where she is considered the daughter of a Chinese king and a peri, a fair like being of the Persian mythology. This is according to Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, and it even has the text about the hairy legs <laughs> and the glass floor. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Lifting the veil on the Queen of Sheba's perfume. She came all the way from where she was in Ethiopia to meet the wisest man of the time, King Solomon, who was, of course, King David's son. So what was so special about her perfume? This is by CNRS on Viz.org. Let's remember that uh, before the women used to go into the harem of the king, 
they used to be prepared for about a year beforehand and uh, every day they would be uh, slathered with <laughs> with uh, frankincense and oils and myrrhs so that it would uh, uh, just uh, seep deep into their skin so that they would always smell fragranced and beautiful for the king. So this was a preparation of their body. They would be slathered with all these uh, uh, the frankincense perfumes and it would uh, be seeping into their skin for a long time. Now, what about the Queen of Sheba? She was probably doing the same thing. According to this, it's one of the oldest fragrances in the world. Nicholas Baldovini's team with the Institute de Chimie de Nice, this is their article, SCNRS, has just discovered the components that give frankincense's distinctive odor. Two molecules found for the first time in nature, named olibanic acids by the scientists. Their research results have just been published online on the website of the journal Angewandte Chemie International Edition. It's mentioned more than 20 times in the Bible, where it is one of the gifts offered by the three wise men. Frankincense, also called olibanum, one of the world's oldest fragrances, uh, the kind they gave him was Boswellia sacra, is a gum resin that exudes from the bark of the Boswellia trees, which grow in the countries bordering the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. It's been used for more than 6,000 years by every civilization, from Mesopotamia to the present, regularly burned during religious ceremonies, and it contributes to the very particular smell of churches, despite its long history and the large amount of research dedicated to it, the exact nature of the molecules that give frankincense its distinctive fragrance surprisingly remained unknown. Please look at the various uh, three videos, the last few videos I have on um, today's uh, videos are the analysis of ancient incense found in the temple in China from the Tang Dynasty of uh, 600 AD. Then we have frankincense and myrrh, revered since antiquity. And then we have the change of direction of immune defense, how frankincense changes the um, uh, inflammatory uh, molecules into uh, the opposite. So it was also a medicine. Uh, but now here we have this uh, thing having to do with the Queen of Sheba's, Sheba's perfume. Now regularly burned during religious ceremonies, uh, Nicholas Baldovini and his team at the Institute in Nice, which specializes in fragrances. As you know, French perfume is the most expensive in the world. Uh, the chief difficulty lay in finding methods of analyzing precise enough to characterize these odorous substances, which are present in the fragrance in very small quantities, a few hundred ppm, parts per million, and therefore all the more difficult to detect. And to do so, the researchers used three kilos of essential oils of frankincense from Somalia, from which they isolated a purified sample of approximately one milligram of two odorant constituents through a series of distillations, extractions, and chromatography analysis. A group of researchers trained to recognize a typical order of frankincense proved necessary to assist in this work for only the human nose is sensitive enough to detect these constituents in small quantities in a mixture. The team then had to determine the molecular structure of these substances using nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, the equivalent of an MRI, applied to molecules. The two molecules which give frankincense its old church smell have been identified as plus or minus trans and plus cis 2 oxyl silo propyl one Carbolic, carboxylic acids, and moreover, this is the first time that these components, these compounds, have been discovered in nature. In order to irrefutably confirm their characterization established use, using special spectral analysis, the team then synthesized each of these components, which they named olibanic acids from olibanum, another name for, for frankincense, and used synthesis to de demonstrate that they were identical to the natural components. And thanks to this discovery, perfume makers can now produce these molecules artificially in unlimited amounts and use them in different perfumes. Will they call them Sheba's perfume is the answer. Finally support my
Patreon account, the daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.